Hello and welcome to Peloton On Pause podcast brought to you by Green Edge. It's all about checking in with riders that are currently in lockdown and that's pretty much the entire list. Uh, some of them get to ride out on the roads, but we're going to talk to two riders that are, are trapped in uh, apartments in Girona and they can't even ride on the roads at the moment. Sam Buley and Jess Allen. I'll start with you, Jess. How are you going in Girona? It seems like I reckon... If it was a head-to-head, you're coping probably a little bit better than uh, our old mate Buell's at the moment. <laughs> yeah, I haven't seen Sam's uh, Zumba videos yet, so I think I've got the upper edge of, on in there. But, um, yeah, it's not too bad. I mean, it sucks we can't go outside, but um, yeah, it's not so bad. I'm pretty lucky. I've got a nice little place here and a balcony where I can get some afternoon sun and, yeah, just getting used to this lockdown routine now. Jules, how are you coping, mate? You're starting to go a bit stir crazy if uh, your cooking videos are any indication, mate. <laughs> mate, I've lost the plot. I've absolutely lost the plot. Um, I'm cutting the tops out of cycling caps and making myself look like a fool in these stupid cooking videos, but it makes me laugh for a couple of minutes a day, and that's probably the, the most important thing at the moment. But yeah, to answer your question, yeah, I've, I've lost the plot. Does it make it harder um, when you hear stories of other riders that um, are allowed to ride out on the roads, uh, Jess, given that uh, you guys pretty much, you've got Zwift and that's about it to keep fit, all you can do. You're doing Zumba, as you said, and uh, you know yoga and things like that, but does it make it harder knowing that other people out there have got a little bit easier? Uh, a little bit. Mind you, I spoke to Sarah Roy yesterday and she's in Australia and can ride on the road, but she did 200 kilometers on Zwift, so. <laughs> what the? She's how, do you do, how, how do you do 200K on Zwift? She's lost it more than me. <laughs> That's I did unbelievable. the other day and I thought that was good and she just doubles it. <laughs> I, uh, I got to read one of your blogs that you did on the uh, Peloton Brief and you gave 10 tips for isolation, uh, Jess. Give us a couple of your best to manage this sort of tough period for everyone uh, tuning in. Uh, Zumba is actually a good one. Um, I haven't done a lot of it, but uh, there's this guy who he works at the gym here in Girona. He just started up a YouTube link, and it's just 20 minutes, um, which is enough for Zumba. It's full on. But um, after that 20 minutes, you actually just feel like you have so much energy and and really happy, and so I like that. Um also, cooking, um, just trying to do new things, uh, new recipes that I haven't done before. Um, I, I saw you learn how to do a headstand the other day oh, as well. yeah. So I've been doing yoga for 12 years, um, and it's actually quite good. My yoga teacher is now streaming online, so I get to do her class every day. And, and yeah, just working on my headstands, and I'd suggest <laughs> if people want to do that, maybe start against the wall because I have – yeah, decked myself quite a few times. <laughs> Billy, are you doing uh, headstands at the moment, mate? What What are your coping mechanisms? Well, it's pretty important that we stay out of hospital um, in these <laughs> in these times. So I think if I was going to do a headstand, it would be defeating the purpose of that. Um, probably fall through the window. But I no, mate. I've been doing all sorts of stuff. I've been <clears throat> creating podcasts, <clears throat> trying to get a podcast going. The social distance. With uh, George Bennett. Bit of a shameless plug there, mate. Uh, uh, I, I, I did see a, a video that was quite funny the other day with uh, the flying mullet. Yeah, no, nah, uh, he, he was our first guest last week and he provided a fair bit of good content there, which um, it was a dream start, really. He couldn't have scripted that little little mess up by, by Shane. So that was, that was a good way to kick things off. And um, So, yeah, I've been doing that, trying to – it takes me about three hours to do, to do something online that takes people probably three minutes. I'm not really a tech guru when it comes to that kind of stuff, but getting the hang of it. Uh, been doing some cooking shows as well. Uh, obviously, we just spoke about that before, but that, that fills in about one minute and 20 seconds every evening, which is good. <laughs> um, and not much, yeah, reading Jack Reacher book, watching a bit of Ozark, just I, I sort of I started season three of Ozark the other day, and I thought oh, I'll drip feed this through, get me through the next couple of weeks. Knock the whole season over in 24 hours, so I have to get onto something new now. Um, Jess, uh, we spoke to uh, Daryl Limpy, who's also in Girona in episode one. Uh, he's got a family. He's got three kids, um, so there's always people around, uh, Daz. But um, both you guys are, are by yourself. Do you enjoy your own company? Is it harder being by yourself in lockdown, or uh, do you sort of envy the guys that have got a, a bit of a motley crew around them? 
I do enjoy my own company, but definitely not for this long. Um, it's it's funny because when we're at races and traveling so much, you're always with people. So it is nice to come back to an apartment where you are by yourself. You can switch off, just get into your own routine. Um, so this is quite challenging being by yourself for so long. But um, it is quite nice also because like I've never spoken to my neighbors before and we go out on the balcony at 8 o'clock every night and clap and, and now I'm becoming friends with them. So it's it's kind of nice just meeting new people and it's such a nice community here in, in Girona as well. Jules, how are you finding your neighbours um, through this period? Are they as tough as the ones tough as the ones I had back in the day? I haven't had any any complaints yet. Um, I had when I, I moved into a new apartment in October last year, and after the first oh, about a week after living here, I, I had the first knock on the door from the downstairs neighbour that the music was too loud at one point. But uh, I think everyone's accepting the fact that we're all locked inside now, so there's. You know, just like in the kitchen, there's no rules. So you can have that music up loud and you can make a bit of, bit of a noise. And I'm sure they're getting annoyed listening to a, to the home trainer every afternoon. But um, it's just the way it is at the, at the moment, unfortunately, for them. Um, I want to talk about cooking. You were mentioning um, that before. Jess, how did you learn how to make gnocchi? Because if anyone looks at your Twitter profile, you did a cracking video the other day making gnocchi um, from scratch. Uh, where'd you pick these skills up from? I actually learned it from Mattia, our team Swanee. Um, so I lived in Italy for three years when I was first on the team and he came over one day and showed all our skills how to make it. Um, so yeah, just just taken on since then and have myself one of the gnocchi squishes and I love making it. And it's a bit hard to make it by yourself because it makes so much. Um, but when you do have a crew around, it's, it's a great feed. How do you go with the uh, carbs? at this time of year, um, obviously in lockdown, um, you have to be really cautious of the amount of carbs that you're pumping in. I'll start with you, Bills. Obviously, you're doing videos about burgers, pizzas, heavy sort of stuff. You're going to have to rein it in, mate, or what's going on? <laughs> yeah. uh, our team actually started uh, sending out well, – we've got a couple of nutritionists in our team, and they started sending us some recipes to do that will – that sort of aid that uh, – um, looking after your body a bit through this period and I don't know how they're feeling about my videos but I think I've uh, sort of going against the grain a little uh, bit. With have, you, have you stacked on the beef? Let's be honest. Oh, probably. <laughs> <laughs> um, so what do you do? What do you do in terms of uh, uh, training outside of Zwift? Are you doing any sort of, um, you know, core exercises or – how do, you, how do you do other training outside of um, just the getting on the, the stationary bike? Um, yeah, I did like a – in the first couple of days, I did a 20-minute full-body workout where you get like – I think you get about 10 seconds rest between ex, each exercise. And now we're about four weeks into lockdown, and I've just recovered from that one. So I'll probably launch into another one in the next couple of days. Um, but, yeah, no, just basic stuff. I don't think we need to be overcomplicated. We don't need to be doing – well, I certainly don't feel like I need to be doing anything differently that I that I wouldn't normally do. So, just training on the bike on Zwift and just doing core stuff, um, which is what what I do all year anyway. Um, and I'm not I'm not sort of adding in too many other other things like rolling polies or cartwheels or I don't know what else you could do in an apartment. Yeah, um, Jess, we were talking to Cam and Spratty last week. Um, how do you stay motivated, knowing that um, the season so far it's sort of uncertain when you're going to get back on the bike um what, what do you use to sort of uh keep yourself driven uh at the moment yeah it's a bit tricky and every week it's kind of ups and downs but um at the moment i'm just not even thinking about racing i'm just thinking about keeping fit and and finding a weekly routine that keeps me happy and and just motivated to jump on the bike most days um so i'm just doing short sharp ergo sessions um I like doing intervals. I find that helps with the motivation instead of just riding aimlessly on the turbo for a few hours. Um, so I'm just, yeah, keeping to an hour, hour and a half sessions, short and sharp, um, and then with a bit of core and, and gym work in there. And, yeah, just focusing on staying fit, healthy, and happy um, and not worrying about too much else. What about you, Bules? What are you doing to uh, light the fire, mate, to stay pumped up about the uh, rest of the year? Well, I started this podcast. It's called The Social Distance. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think, I think um, 
I think what Jess, Jess said is exactly right. I think that it's it's impossible to know when we're going to start racing yet. There's obviously a lot of rumours going around, but the the in a nutshell, no no one has any idea when when the first race is going to be. So it's really hard to to think about that. I think the most important thing is just to do to do what you're happy with doing. You know, you don't have to plan what your training is going to be one day to the next. I think you just need to get on the bike and just do what you feel like doing. If one day you wake up and you feel like, you know what, I want to do three hours on Swift, then go and do it. Uh, if you wake up one day and you think, oh, I just want to do one hour full gas, do one hour full gas. If you feel like you want to just do gym and have a, put your feet up, do that. It's just about keeping keeping happy, keeping um, yeah some sort of routine, but but just sort of going with your emotions a little bit and not force forcing yourself to do things because ultimately we could be on Swift for a, for a few more weeks yet. And I think if you force force it down your throat too much, um, the wheels might fall off a bit towards the end when it's be- going to become a bit more important to be doing a bit more on the bike. Um, a lot of your teammates are based in Europe and uh, going through a pandemic like this, I mean, it's not that far if you're based in uh, the UK or Holland or whatever to, to go back home. Um, Jess, you're obviously from Australia. Bules, your NZ. St- um, I'll start with you, Jess. Were you contemplating going back to Australia um, and bunkering down during this period, and knowing what you know now, do you wish you did, or are you, are you happy that you're, you're in Girona at the moment? Um, no, I actually didn't really think for a second to go home. Um, I'm meant to be here most of the year anyway, and and I've really set up my home here in Girona now, so I'm really happy here, and, and we have a really nice community, and yeah, it'd be great if we could ride outside like in Australia, but um, I'm happy enough here, and we will be able to go outside at some time, but yeah, until then, it's yeah, it's fine. I think Mum wishes I was home now, but just got to make sure I give her a call every now and then, keep her happy. <laughs> what about you, Bules? There's not much to do in Rotorua, given that uh, there's full lockdown because everything they do back there is all outdoors. Yeah, that's it. Um, yeah, I, I I did contemplate it for a for a little bit about going back to New Zealand. Um, well, I sort of weighed up my options, uh, and, I, and I sort of. I think like everybody or a lot of people, you've got to sort of think, all right, where am I going to be most happy? Um, where's the best place for me to get through this? And for for a little bit, I did think about going back to New Zealand because obviously when Spain went into lockdown, um, New Zealand was still in a pretty good position. But I sort of had the feeling that I was just going to be chasing this this pandemic around the world. And obviously we've, we can see now that there's there's not really anywhere that's that's safe from this um, from this outbreak. So I decided to stay here. Uh, I, I sort of figured that Spain was a few weeks in front of New Zealand in terms of um, where they're at with cases and, and lockdown and all that stuff. And if I went back to New Zealand, I was maybe just going to be putting myself back a, a few weeks. Um, obviously, New Zealand's done really well. Uh, Jacinda Ardern's an absolute legend. Um, and she, she's done some really good things. And New Zealand's actually pr- pretty on top of it. Um, but yeah, at the end of the day, this is sort of my home. My home it has been my home for for about ten years now, and I feel most comfortable here in my own place and um, talking to my, to my to myself rather than my dad. <laughs> um, <laughs> before we go to the first break, give us a tip uh, for the best thing that you've been watching or reading. Uh, that's Netflix, books. Give us something, Jess. Um, uh, Money Heist or Casa de Papel. It's um, a Spanish TV series, and the new season just came out last week and yeah i did smash it in two nights so it was pretty good where do you see that is that netflix or yeah on netflix i think there's three, yeah, right. three or four seasons now and it's about a bank is... <laughs> yeah okay um <laughs> any big names banderas or <laughs> are we going glaciers <laughs> yeah. uh Bills, other than listening to the uh Social distance podcast. What other tips you got for people uh, in terms of content? Yeah, so that's a new podcast that I've started. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, I um, I watched actually watched the test on Amazon Prime. Um, I'm sure most people in Australia have heard of that. It's a documentary about the Australian cricket team coming back from Sandpaper Gate um, up into the Cricket World Cup last year and the Ashes series. After that, it's actually. As much as I'm a avid supporter of the New Zealand cricket team, um, it's a it's a really good series actually. Good insight into that and how that team rebuilt their culture um, after having that that massive scandal. And uh, yeah, it's a good watch. 
Did you find similarities between Justin Langer, the coach of the Australian team, and Neil, Neil Stevens? Stevens. <laughs> <laughs> We're very similar. It's yeah. Like that uh, stink eye when he was going, yeah, uh, you know, a lot of these guys getting ahead of themselves here. We just need to bring it back to, uh, yeah, keeping it simple. Did you find that? Absolutely. I just take a double take a couple of times. I thought I was watching Steve O coach the cricket team for a bit. <laughs> All right, no, you're right. It's a great series, so check that out. Amazon Prime. And while you're there, I think there's the um, Green Edge uh, series they did in 2017 on Amazon right. Prime as well, uh, Race to Win. So check that out as well. We're going to have a break, and when we come back, we're going to talk about cycling cravings, and that's uh, brought to you by Giordana. All right, we're back from the break. Cycling Cravings brought to you by Giordana. Uh, Jess, I'll start with you. What do you miss the most at the moment um, not racing? Is it your teammates? Is it like a certain type of food? Is it getting a massage from the Swannies? What What are you missing at the moment? Yeah, definitely my teammates. Um, yeah, we are, we're such a great team. We're all friends um, off the bike as well. But other than that, I'm actually missing the adrenaline of racing, like being in a bunch positioning going fast down descents like Zwift's good but you don't get the technical aspect of um of bike racing and I'm looking forward to getting back into that uh what about you Bills uh yeah, what are you missing at the moment definitely the teammates uh definitely miss hanging out with the boys and uh having a laugh at races and I think also the I mean we're so used to traveling for most of the year and now that we've just come to a bit of a standstill for quite a long period I, I just miss that stimulation of traveling and as much as I hate going to airports and getting on planes, um, right now I actually do miss it, travelling around Europe and, and, uh, and just having that stimulation and sort of being on the go all the time. Um, being in Girona, guys, um, there's obviously some good hikes you can do and um, different bars and restaurants and all that sort of stuff. Um, I heard that the restrictions, Jess, are, are pretty tight where you can only go for exercise if you've got a dog. Have you been tempted to hijack someone else's dog or – get a stuffed dog and put some wheels on it, you know. Um, you've been tempted to bend the rules a bit? I was actually looking at fostering a dog, um, but a lot of the the companies, I guess, have shut down for this period. Um, but, yeah, it's a bit tricky. We're hoping that maybe you can just go for a run or something, but they're super strict. And even if you do have a dog now, you're really only meant to leave, like, 200 metres from your apartment. So um, a lot of people are getting caught taking the dogs for like long runs and yeah, but I wouldn't mind going for a run right now, to be honest. <laughs> what about you, Bills? Have you uh, flouted the rules at all? Well, when you're talking about dogs, I actually used to have a stuffed dog um, <laughs> that, you, that you know all too well, Jonesy. That's right. A, a dog that I bought for you um, when you moved into that set apartment that you had that housewarming party, party at. Um, the name of that dog will remain unspoken, but um, I, I had this dog. I gave it to you, and somehow when you left, when you left your owner, it ended up at my place, and then it was, it was there for about three or four years. And then when I moved apartments last year, I thought, oh, I've got to get rid of this bloody dog. It's, I, it's, I can't it's, believe you got rid of that dog I don't know, because I, that I, dog had a special place in everyone's heart. And you look at it now; it's it's bit you in the ass because what you wouldn't pay to have that dog with some wheels. And just to take it around the park. Oh, the the problem, the problem with that dog is it was in good condition until we took it to Corafoc last couple of years ago, and it caught on fire and got, got beer spilt on it, and it just became this unhygienic mess in my in my lounge. So I had to get rid of it. And but yeah, you're right. If I had it right now, I'd certainly be putting it on a skateboard or something and pushing it around town. Um, is there anything, Jess, in the supermarkets you can't get at the moment in the lockdown? Like, obviously, we've talked about it every week. Uh, toilet rolls have been scooped up here in Australia. Um, but is there anything in this current situation that you're, you're craving that you're not getting in the supermarket? Flour's been a bit difficult, actually, and yeast. Um, I made some hot cross buns this morning, and I went to the supermarket the other day, and all the big supermarkets seem to be sold out of flour and yeast. So I went to a little supermarket, and um, they had it. So um that's about it really toilet paper seems to still be available um but everything else people aren't crazy like australians 
I don't know. Everyone just buys stuff they need on the day. Yeah, it was it, it was absolutely nuts back here. Um, there was full on Barney's uh, at supermarkets and so forth. Um, is there anything that uh, you can't currently get, Bills, at the moment in the supermarket? No, um, I I did see the other day actually, Jess. That uh, well, I saw this morning that in Spain that flour sales have gone up by ninety five percent across the country. So everyone seems to be making sourdough, I guess. Um, it's the latest craze. I haven't gone to that yet, so don't need the flour. But look, Jones, I live a pretty simple life, mate. As long as I've got a couple of couple of uh, vegetables in the bowl and a block of cheese in the fridge, then I'll I'll be right. Um, have you guys got into TikTok? Uh, my wife's addicted at the moment, and uh, I think there was a video of Durbo and Lara doing a TikTok dance the other day. Um, are you wary that, like this period, it's it's danger zone in terms of getting addicted to average apps at the moment? Are you you haven't bought into it yet, Bills? No, I don't even really know what TikTok is. I had to ask Lara the other day actually what TikTok is. I mean, I see it's just some. I guess it's just some dances or something, is it? But no, I, I won't be. I won't be doing that. Much. Jess, it's right up. Much. It's right up your alley. I reckon uh, you could start banging out TikTok videos every day. <laughs> Well, when the girls are still here before lockdown, um, Georgia Williams, Lucy Kennedy, and myself were trying to to do one, but I just have no coordination, like just none. Even doing Zumba or anything, ball sports, just no coordination. So I'm going to have to start pretty simple if I'm going to get into it. I think the best thing is you get numerous takes. So even if you stuff one or two of them up, you can just keep going until you you nail something that you like. So check it out. Uh, TikTok. Uh, I want to see some TikTok videos next week. Maybe uh, shelve the the cooking videos, Bills, and uh, give us a, a dance routine, mate. Can you do a TikTok cook cooking show? You can mix them up. I don't see why not. Uh, I reckon that it, it'll be tough because they're short. Like they're only 10, 15 seconds. Oh, so wow. there's a challenge. Maybe you just do I don't know crepes. Something really short. Yeah. All right. We're going to take another break. Uh, After this one, we're going to talk about Inside the Victory, brought to you by Scott Sports. We're back. Inside the Victory, brought to you by Scott Sports. Uh, It's going to be tough for Buells, particularly as a Rolodex has so many great wins. Uh, But we'll start with you, Jess. Um, What's your favorite victory and why? Uh, yeah, I guess I haven't actually won that many races. So um, whenever I do get a win, it's I'm pretty stoked. Um, but I guess my last win was the National Criterium uh, a few years ago. And that was my first Nationals with the team. And, yeah, that was really exciting for me. And, um, yeah, really awesome to put the, put the hands in the air. Do you have all your family there in support down at Ballarat? No, I didn't actually. Um had Gino there. He was coaching me at the time and, and Anna Meek was there too. So she actually had it on film and then we put together this cool little video afterwards and yeah, it was really special. It's um it's a big week uh, for the team, the Nationals. Um, and obviously there's a lot of hype around being like an Aussie team and so forth. Um, going into the race, were you thinking that, you know, you're a fair chance of, of winning it or was it totally caught you by surprise and then afterwards it was just shock? Um. Oh, it's just a national crit, so normally there's not too much pressure. Um, but, yeah, I'd, I'd had a good bay criterium before then, and um, and the plan was pretty open. It was just to be aggressive, and, and yeah, I found myself away solo with about 10 laps to go and, and just rode it to the finish. So it was a bit of a surprise, but um, I knew I was in good form and was really happy that the girls, yeah, supported me for the win. And Jess, what about uh, victories that you've been on the team um, where teammates won that has meant the most to you, where, you know, you've had to go in and do some work early on, um, where teammates uh, got the, the honours at, at the end of the day? What What's meant the most to you over the, over the journey? Oh, there's a few. Um, definitely last year's World Championships, actually. Um, riding for Spratty uh, to her bronze medal was pretty awesome. I only had about... 40 50k job but yeah it felt super special when she finished it off and um also Anna Meek's win in Strada Bianchi last year um and then her first jury win 
uh, that was that was really awesome. I wasn't even meant to be racing the Giro that year, and I got a call up a week before um, to race because Georgia Williams had fractured her pelvis. Um, so stepped in there a bit underdone, but did the job, and it was super awesome to to have Anamik finish that off, and and we had so many stage wins that tour as well. Uh, good stuff. What about you, Bills? Um, what's your uh, highlight in terms of victories? Um, uh, and, and, mate, it can just be medals. It doesn't have to be the gold. Exactly because I haven't won anything. Le- le- leading you in there, mate. <laughs> no, I actually have got one victory that that, um, that is quite special to me. Um, we won the – when we won the, the team time trial at the Giro in 2015, uh, it was first first stage uh, in San Remo. And we, we had, we'd put, like, a lot of emphasis on, on trying to win that stage and obviously – um, taking the taking the leaders jersey from doing that, and we had a real we had a bit of a hit squad there for that team time trial. So there was a fair bit of pressure on us to win that. Um, and the boys like that was one of the best t- team time trials I've ever been part of. Um, Sixty k an hour down this bike path, um, and everyone was just just on awesome form that day. And and uh, we had we had a pretty good pretty good lead over most teams. Um, we started quite early, and then the last team to go, which was Saxa Bank, with Contador and and those guys, they they were up on us by quite a few seconds at the halfway point, and then we started to get a bit nervous there. And then um, lucky we had some big engines like Old Heppy doing doing some big turns at the end of his at the end of that ride. So we managed to end up winning that by about ten or ten or fifteen seconds, I think. So that was. Uh, not only my only victory, um, but <laughs> a pretty special one. Uh, that was the year, I think, uh, was Peter Weening still in the team around then? The That's what we're talking about. The Mother's Day was like three <laughs> days later. Yeah. The, the and then by, 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 by the end of the Giro, remember, <laughs> everyone was so cooked because you'd had such a big success early on in the Giro. And then by the end, I remember it was real grim. Like that oh, bus in that last week, it was – you just didn't want, you didn't want to be anywhere near it. We, we, that was, to me, still now I've done – I think I've done nine or, nine or ten grand tours and that's the hard – undoubtedly the hardest one I've done. Um, basically, we we won the team time trial and then we won a couple more stages in that first week. Um, and then we held the leader's jersey. Remember the jersey went from Gero to – Bling to Clarky. Yeah, exactly. Three. And then uh, Bling was obsessed with uh, his teddies, like who had the pink jersey teddies, and he did a stock take. I think uh, one of the mechanics, you know, hit it under the bus or something, and I think he almost didn't start the next day until that teddy turned up. (laughs) No, that was – yeah, it was was a rough duo, that one. We, we, Yeah, like you say, we had a lot of success in that first week, and in the last – Last week, especially, we were just all shells. We, we didn't have anyone doing GC then. We just had, like, we'd gone from having these nine guys ripping around San Remo at 60k an hour to just having, like, I think we had about four guys go home, and then we had the other five just in the last group every day. Just, I remember, I think, I think a couple of guys even cried on one stage after stage 20. Um, so, yeah, I was happy when I think was. a lot of the staff were crying as well. I think uh, it was just a collective bunch of tears. Everyone's just ready to put a fork in it. <laughs> and then you know, good you times, anyway. <laughs> 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 we we're talking that. about victories, and we finished on a real sour <laughs> note. But anyway, that's a that's a good section. That one um, inside the victory. <laughs> that's going to buy Scott Sports. That'll get um, some traction. Oh yeah, for sure. Uh, we're going to take another break, and then uh, we've got uh, fan questions. Ask anything uh, presented by Shimano. It's uh, Ask Anything Time presented by uh, Shimano. And uh, we keep sending in your questions to Facebook, Instagram, uh, Twitter. Uh, we've got a few here. Uh, we'll start off with uh, Samari Lees. Uh, and this is for you, Bills. Uh, who, in, who influenced you to go for Hawthorne? That's a pretty easy, <laughs> easy one. Easy question, that one. You, mate. You, when, you, uh, when you gave me that, when you gave me that singlet, and then you gave me another one, and then you gave me a set of stubbies, I sort of had no mm. option but to jump on the Hawthorne bandwagon. 
Uh, you're disappointed that the uh, season's obviously come to a grinding halt, but we did win the opening round. You must be stoked. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's typical Hawks, though, isn't it? And then, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just gonna, it's I'm, I'm happy that the season's not going to be on, actually, just so that we can end uh, the Richmond Tigers run. So our boss, yeah, Shane, Banning, Shane Bannon's got nothing to talk about. You have actually done a bit of research. Great stuff. Uh, we've got another one. This is for you, Jess, from Michelle6322. Jess, uh, where else besides Zumba do you wear your sequin shorts? <laughs> well, the sequin shorts are actually pyjamas, um, but they're not very comfortable to wear to bed, so I just bring them out for special occasions like Zumba, sometimes for a dinner party. All right, Jess, we've got another question from uh, Wella MJ. Uh, what is your all-time favourite meal and who, in brackets, non-cyclist, would you like to have dinner with? My all-time favourite food would be lamb shanks. Um, I like slow-cooked meat and have that on some mashed potato with some broccoli. And I don't know who I'd want to have dinner with who's not Scamo? a cyclist. Yeah, why not? <laughs> See what his deal is lately. <laughs> yeah, it would be a good uh, conversation for sure. Uh, what yeah, about you, Bills? Um, what's your favourite food and who would you like to have a, a feed with? Um, probably my favourite thing over the last – I sort of fluctuate, but over the last couple of years is um, – <laughs> you're right, Jason? Um, yeah. Is um, chili con carne. I enjoy making that. It takes a bit of time and get some good tunes on, nice glass of red while you're doing it. So that's probably my favourite favorite dish over the last couple of years. And if I could invite someone around to have that with me, 100 cent for me would be Kelly Slater. Um, I love that guy. I think he'd just be – I've always followed – follow, I like to follow the surfing and I've always followed Kelly and uh, he's just like – you follow him on Instagram, he's just such a legend. Do you wear a lot of Quicksilver as a result? No, I don't actually. Should do. No, well, you're not – you're not – you're not a massive Kelly fan then. Anyway, we'll move on. Um, Carson Ego uh, asked Jess a question. Uh, what's Jess, what's your favourite hill for repeats in Perth? Favourite hill for repeats? I do like um, Mills Road East. It's quite a good one. It's about 4.5K at about 8% average. Um, and also Camper Sick. Yeah. Um, that means absolutely nothing to me. I'm sorry, I'm from Victoria, but um, if you are in Perth, check them out. That's um, it. <laughs> we've got one for you, Bills. Uh, Simon Van Veltuven, mm. uh, in brackets, he's New Zealand's track rider and America's Cup winner. I believe uh, he might be a guest on your, your podcast. That I don't know if you've mentioned it yet, but uh, he, he's definitely coming up. Uh, how many team pursuits has Sam Bewley actually completed? <laughs> Did he send that in? Yeah. Oh, good one, Rhino. Um, mate, I've finished them all. Uh, I'm proud to say I didn't finish a lot in training, but every one of the race in, in races, so the World Champs, the Olympics and stuff, I had a 100% completion rate. Are you telling the truth or? No, actually I'm not. I just remembered. Commonwealth Games in Delhi, I didn't finish. So I you haven't completed them all? No, nah, but <laughs> yeah. I don't think... None of us completed that one, to be honest. We're all over the okay. track. Okay. Oh, well. Um, bad luck about that, mate. Uh, all right. Well, that finishes the fan questions. Uh, we've got our final segment. This is a new one. This is head-to-head -head battle of the sexes. Men and women's team going head-to-head -head with a quiz presented by Pirelli. All right, it's uh, quiz time presented by Pirelli. Uh, I thought given that uh, both of you guys uh, claim to be master chefs, uh, I'll ask you uh, questions, true or false. All you have to yell out is an answer, true or false. Uh, and it's all about cooking. I, I think I've got 10 or 11 questions. I've just pirated these off BuzzFeed. Um, so we'll kick things off. Uh, question number one, alcohol completely evaporates during cooking, true or false? True. True. Quick on the mark there, mate. What do you reckon, Jess? True or false? Yeah, true. Uh, that's false. Uh, in <laughs> fact, 5 to 85% of alcohol can remain in the food depending on how it's cooked. 
just thought you'd get that one. But anyway, oh, we're it, nil all. It. Oh, well. Nil all. Uh, that's a good start. Good one, Jeff. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Question number two. Cutting steak against the grain makes it tender. True or false? False. False. Wrong. Steak should always <laughs> be cut oh, against did. the grain. We're off to a cracker, guys. Uh, Master <laughs> Chef, <laughs> zero and two. All right, let's go. Question number three. Searing meat seals in the juices. True or false? True. False. Uh, Jess, you're correct. Yes. Julie, you're, you're on donuts, mate. <laughs> Sear, searing is used just to add flavor and texture to meats, not to seal in their juice, juices. Ooh. Cooking at a high temperature causes meat to undergo the Milliard reaction, resulting in a nice oh, crust with true. deep flavor. Yeah, of yeah. Course, of course. No, sorry, mate. All right, Jess, you're on one. Julie, you're on donuts. Come on, mate. <laughs> Bounce back. Uh, I've got another one. Uh, the seed of peppers contain the most heat. True or false? True. False. False. Uh, it is false. Ah. Uh, so it's one all. Uh, the hottest part of the pepper is actually the material surrounding the seeds. So yep. there you go. Oh, all right. Okay. Storing guacamole with the pit prevents it browning. What's True or guacama- false? What's guacamole? Avocado. <laughs> oh, guacamole. 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 Yeah, guac. <laughs> Storing guac with the pit prevents it browning. True or false? True. True. It's actually false. Instead of adding the pit, limit <laughs> oxygen exposure by creating an airtight layer of oil or water. Jeez, guys, come on. <laughs> this is one all. <sighs> all right, another one. Storing tomatoes upside down will make them last longer. True or false? False. True. Well done, Jess. You never, never in doubt. <laughs> Correct. Storm them upside down. Um, I don't even eat tomatoes. <laughs> it limits the oxygen from entering the stem hole. There you no. go. All right. Uh, another one. So, what's the score, Jess? You're up two one. Yeah, two one. All right. Adding oil to boiling water will prevent pasta from sticking. True or false? True. False. What well on, Billy? It's wrong. Uh, apparently, uh, stirring and making sure your water is at full boil are the only ways to prevent pasta from sticking. Oil floats to the top of the water, making it an actual waste. Geez, you're <laughs> learning a lot today, I tell you what. Uh, we've got another one. Adding salt to water will make it boil faster. True or false? True. False. Uh, false is correct. Um, what? Salted water does not boil faster. Salted water does not boil faster than unsalted water. In fact, adding salt to water actually increases the boiling point. Salt is used to season water, not to speed up the cooking process. So it's two our all. Team chef, our team chef, Nikki Strobel, told me it does. Well, Nikki needs to get on BuzzFeed. <laughs> yeah. Nikki needs to pull his head in. He's telling you porky pies. Uh, and the umpire here is BuzzFeed. So Nikki's right, wrong. Okay. All right, this, this, I think this could be the uh, pretty much the grand final, the next couple. Whoever gets a correct answer from here on wins. You should soften butter overnight for baking, true or false? True. True. You're both wrong. <laughs> wrong. <laughs> Leaving butter out sure. overnight will often, will often over-soften it. Over softening butter is a serious mistake that will prevent baked goods from creaming properly. Jeez. Oh, All no, right, come on. Buns are going to be a disaster. Yeah, washing mushrooms in water will make them soggy. True or false? <laughs> true, surely. <laughs> Jess, true or false? False. And we have a winner, folks. Uh, no, it's false. <laughs> Jess is the winner. Washing mushrooms in water will not make them soggy. Julie, I've got to tell you, mate, mushrooms are 90% water to begin with. The key to successfully browning mush- mushrooms is making sure they are completely dry before cooking. Let them dry on a towel lined sheet for at least 15 minutes after washing. See how to properly wash them. Click on BuzzFeed. 
Check out but the then, rest, I, Jules. But, you've but, let the team down. That's a disgrace. But then they'll slug you. They'll slug you when they come out of the. No, 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 dry them yeah. out. Give them fifteen minutes. Don't jump the gun. Yeah, well, a soggy dog's not soggy once it dries either. <laughs> no, no, mate, you got it wrong. Jess is the winner, so we're going to be collating oh, these scores oh, over oh, the uh, podcast. <laughs> Uh, season one, and the women's team are up one nil. Bewley's let the team down. Absolutely shocking performance. And uh, Sorry, boys. Boys. <laughs> but uh, what I want to do is finish off on the final word. Um, Jess, what do you want to say to all the listeners, all the people tuning in out there um, during a pretty tough period? Um, what's what's your final word? Ah, oh, just make the most out of a pretty pretty average situation, I guess. Um, yeah, try to do things that you enjoy that you don't normally get the time to do um, because, yeah, I'm sure before we know it, we'll hopefully be back into the swing of things and, yeah, reach out to people and, and stay in touch. Purely final words, mate. Follow the Social Distance Podcast on uh, Spotify or YouTube and stay tuned for the next episode. I had a feeling that you'd be giving yourself <laughs> a, uh, a plug. Uh, but anyway, uh, it was it was great to check in with you guys. Uh, thanks for taking the time out to have a chat. Um, we'll be obviously on board again next week on Monday uh, for Peloton on pause. So make sure you give him a like, a share, join in with the, the comments and so forth. And uh, we'll see you next week. Thanks again, guys. Cheers, Jonesy. Mm-hmm.